Jaron, one of the fascinating questions is, are we alone are, or are there intelligent alien civilizations that we can see? It is a very interesting and important human question for our own grounding. And on one hand, a large majority of scientists would say, obviously there are. It's ludicrous to assume that we'd be alone, this little planet outside the, the mainstream of our, even our own galaxy, and there are 100 billion galaxies and two, 300 billion stars in our galaxy. It's just impossible, virtually impossible that we could be alone. But then the famous Fermi paradox, Enrico Fermi one day said, okay, where are they? Why don't we see evidence of these kinds of civilizations? One of the arguments against that is that all of these smart alien civilizations have descended into virtual reality. Yes. I don't know if you've been cloned on all these other worlds. Maybe you're the, the, the messiah on these worlds that show oh, them God. they should go into the virtual well, reality and not show themselves. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny idea that, that virtuality would be the thing that, that is um, Keep, keeps absorbing up. all of this energy in the world. You'd yeah. think there'd at least be some civilization yeah, of aliens would. somewhere that would make right. some other choice. Like, right, I mean, right. virtuality can't be that beguiling to be like this universal um, right, right. sponge. That, right. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, You've uh, heard that argument, I'm oh, sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, um, the, the Fermi paradox is haunting and... As a boy, I would look up in the sky and wonder about it. The, the, the intense pit of loneliness of thinking that we're really it in this enormous vastness is almost unbearable. And yet, it is truly strange that we see no evidence. And you would think that you would. I mean, when Europeans first came upon the Western Hemisphere, they found evidence of civilizations, you know, Machu Picchu and so forth. There should be something up there. So what's going on? Um, because the universe has had 14 billion years before us, and, and if evolution takes mm -hmm. 5 billion years, and we can look in the past, and we're seeing 5 billion mm -hmm. years back, I mean, there should be, have been enough time to see stuff. Well, I can offer a few thoughts on this. I can offer a couple of explanations for why we might not be seeing alien life that actually does exist. Mm -hmm. I can offer some thoughts on what we might be able to observe of alien virtual worlds. And I can offer some thoughts on some signs that we might be able to send to aliens or that they might be sending to us that we haven't recognized yet. I think these are all extremely important. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I, I'll start with the question of um, why we don't see them. Um, I'm an optimist about the amount of ignorance that we possess. Mm -hmm. I believe we possess huge stores of ignorance that we don't <laughs> acknowledge. And therefore, I think it's conceivable that there's some layer of physics that we haven't come upon yet, something that's so spectacularly more interesting than electromagnetic radiation that civilizations that discover it just don't bother with sending out radio and TV signals and the like anymore. And as soon as we discover that thing, we'll build an instrument to look at it, and then the sky will light up with constructions. Okay, <laughs> That to me is a conceivable future, although of course I have no idea what that phenomenon might be like, not even the slightest beginning clue. But it's at least a possibility. It's also possible that we're just precocious. Now remember, the civilizations that we might see out in the sky are, exist in our past, in sure. our light cone going sure. backward in time. If we're precocious, it might be that it just takes a while for things to get going and that the galaxies will indicate life, star systems near us will indicate life if we wait long enough, which could be quite a long time. Conceivable. Yeah. The argument against that says that it took us four or five billion years to evolve from when the Earth formed, and we can look back and see very large numbers of stars that have, have had that time. But, if, right. but again, if we're very precocious and it takes 10 billion years instead of five, which is not even an order of magnitude, then maybe you're right. Well, this isn't the only problem. Right now, for somebody to see us, they would see electromagnetic radiation. Yeah from us. And remember that they have to exist within a light cone trajectory 
very precisely at the same moment in which we've been right, doing right. this. I mean, of this en the enormous time spans evolved in evolution. We just have a few decades of, of these emissions, you know, and so and they have to be receiving during those few decades. Right. And that's a very tiny aperture of alignment. And it's very easy to believe that there could be a multitude of civilizations that last for a long time, for tens of thousands of years, and that yet we don't have that particular alignment. Yeah, yeah, and it would have um, to be e even longer than that. It would have to be really uh, millions of years to really increase okay. the likelihood. So this leads to my lunatic proposal for how uh, to overcome I, I, this I, problem. I, 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 that is exactly <laughs> all why I always want to see you, Darren. Oh, okay. I, if I feel if I feel in need of lunatic ideas okay. that just might be right and will set me thinking in a way I could have never all imagined. Right. I come to you. Well, maybe this is one of those. Let's, and I, I, I don't yet know if this is plausible, uh -huh. but I can, it's an answerable question, and I'm just starting the work. There's a lot of calculation involved. But hypothetically, if we were to set up some sort of a radio beacon emitting uh, news of our presence that was supposed to outlast whatever would happen to us, how long could it possibly run? If we built it very reliably, tens of thousands of years, I don't know, but that would be tough. Okay. And so then that, we, that doesn't solve this narrow aperture problem. So here's what we do. Uh, you know how to prevent an asteroid from hitting Earth. If it's due to hit the Earth, what you do is you put a spaceship in front of it, and the spaceship flies at a trajectory that just gradually pulls on the asteroid over a long time with because gravity. Of gravity, even with though gravity. it's very small compared to the Tiny asteroid. Tiny amount of gravity, but over enough time it actually yes. can adjust the trajectory. Yes. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to start sending up spaceships until they can assemble in a formation. Now, this might take a long time, 10,000 years, what the hell. If our civilization falls apart, the next one after a few centuries or a few millennia can pick it up. But over some tens of thousands of years, we assemble a formation of spaceships. It goes out to the Kuiper Belt, out, out beyond the large planets, starts changing the trajectories of things. Now what we're going to do is we're going to play a gravitational hedge fund game. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a small amount of mass and leverage <laughs> a large amount of mass, and then we're going to recycle that and leverage a larger amount of mass. And what we're going to do is gradually round up enough of the Kuiper belt that over a very long period of time, and now we're starting to talk about truly long periods of time, far beyond the scope of thinking about our civilization, far beyond it, we're going to start to change the sun's course around the galaxy. Okay, no, no, but we're not done. At the same time, we've sent out spaceships to nearby stars, maybe, I don't know, 10, 12, and over the course of tens of thousands of years, they've arrived, and they've started the same action. And I believe we can build computers that will last for tens of thousands of years. They, now what we're going to do is we're going to guide all of these stars that are neighbors very slightly so they fall into a beautiful geometric pattern in a special orbit that they couldn't have fallen into naturally that will last for hundreds of millions of years or longer. Now we have stable, created... Stable orbit. Stable, if it exists. And I have to say, there, the mechanics problems here are substantial. And I could, I could argue that this isn't possible, but not absolutely. And therefore, I'm going to keep on pursuing it. I think there's a there's I think there's a shred of hope that this can happen. Now, if we create this weird thing, this weird structure that is stable under the sorts of perturbations that can be expected, that all of a sudden solves our aperture problem. That's something that can be noticed for a long enough period of time. Hundreds of millions of years, potentially. Potentially, you know. So there's this weird thing going around the galaxy that's like this little geometric marvel. Now, once we have the proof of concept in theory, we can do a sky survey and see if anybody else thought of it. <laughs> and there you are. So that, now that's my proposal for, you know, what to do about this, this yeah. Fermi paradox. I think this is terrific because what it, <laughs> what it allows us to do is, is imagine all the ways that intelligent aliens could signal us. Because we know electromagnetic and that can be, you know, radio waves as we first looked at and now we're looking for, for laser pulses, directed laser pulses. Sure. And, and uh, you know, maybe new ways as you've said. And here, here's another way. You know, nobody has said that. So that's fascinating to do. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll find something, and if we don't, over long periods of time, that's its own statement of significance. Yeah, importance. well, it's very possible that the scenario I describe is simply not achievable, and the math will tell us that. And if somebody came to me and said they'd prove it was impossible, my inclination would be to believe them. But yeah. I haven't seen that proof yet, so I'm going to pursue it. If it is impossible, well, then we're done. If it's possible, then we definitely should do a sky survey.